We're now um, moving on to the, um, the section of the, the meeting, which is got some lightning talks. Um, and it's where, where we have uh, members of our community have a chance to present some uh, work that they've done during the year. Um, uh, and the first up um, is uh, Vanessa Liston, who's going to talk about um, Map Hatters and Selbridge. So without any further ado, I'd like to um, welcome Vanessa. Thanks very much for doing this. Much appreciated. And uh, if you'd like to uh, start on your presentation, thank you. Sure, uh, thanks very much um, for the introduction and I'm delighted to have the chance to I suppose, explain to the community uh, today at our AGM uh, what we've been doing in Selbridge, where we've got to since we started this year, where we're at at the moment and what we're hoping to do. Um, so maybe just a little bit first about Selbridge, just so everyone knows. Um, it's in County Kildare and it's a beautiful heritage town. Um, it's the birthplace of Arthur Guinness and it, it has Castletown House, a load of history and heritage. And it's also the place where Jonathan Swift had his romantic tryst with Esther von Humbridge, um, who, who we named Vanessa. So if anyone would like to uh, visit during the summer, uh, please let us know and we'd love to see you there. So this is some of our, our mapping group. There's around 12 on our mapping uh, group at the moment from different groups across the community. And we started, um, I just noticed if, if somebody wasn't mind muting, that would be great, thanks. Um, so we started back in February this year, I believe, when um, we spoke to Kieran and with the Selbridge Community Council as well to explore ways that we could develop a map for Selbridge, particularly given you know, the time of with all the development plans and growth of our towns and so on, and to see how we could use mapping um, to, to bring some of that value to members of the community and to um, be able to use the map to communicate our points and to see what's happening. So there's currently, um, here are some of the members, there's Flora, there's Thelma, there's Stephen, Stephen was already a mapper, and there's Kevin, myself, there's Alan, and there's um, Shane, and there's a lot more. Um, so, so that's part of the team. They all say hello. They can't all be here today, but they do all say hello. And thanks very much for the support from the OSM community to get us started. So since uh, February, um, here's um, our map of Selbridge at the moment. And I just go through what we have done since, since we started. So um, between January and March, we have uh, mapped 7,800 buildings and that's a rise from 600 and across 27 contributors. So again, lots of people jumped in from the community to help us with that sprint and that first. We got a lot done and it was a really exciting time and people could start seeing the map coming alive. We also gathered uh, 14,000 map pillory images and that was a lot of fun. You know, just getting out on bikes, walking and um, in the car, wherever. And we managed to, um, to map, get most of, 99% I believe of Selbridge Town um, done in Map Hillary. So a lot of us on in the group that started or attracted other people into the group were interested in mapping natural features. Um, we have a Selbridge Biodiversity Action Plan. We did training sessions and tidy towns, for example, and people in the biodiversity group uh, attended. And there was a, a growth and we were just starting this, we aimed to do it in another task, in task three, to really focus on this area. But there was around 2,000 um, items, natural features mapped, and that's 500% uh, growth rate. So you can see that, and, and that's all good. And we plan to uh, do more on that. Certainly one of my key focus areas as well. So how are we using the map? Um, and I guess this again is one, is, one of the nice things about what we've been able to do are the stories that we've been able to tell and the contributions to different issues that, are, that arise in the community. And Stephen um, and Alan have done a lot of work on this. So this is just one of the examples um, where there was an issue around a child that uh, was hospitalized and was suspected um, because um, contact with dog poo. Uh, and then the question was, why do we not have enough bins? Where are they? Are they in the right places and so on? So, and this is an ongoing conversation, for example, in the council and, and, and in the community. So just mapping the bins, looking where they are, and that sort of is part of a campaign to raise awareness about uh, cleaning up um, 
um, after dogs and so on. And there's a lot of other information there. Um, the accessibility group, they were applying for funding. They asked for, you know, maps to support that, that they could do videos and help explain and communicate also about accessibility issues in the community. And they use maps for that. So um, really a lot of stories are emerging in the community and the people that within it are beginning to see the value and are curious about the map. And I guess that's the question about, you know, can we get it on phones and get people out uh, and contributing to those stories um, on their maps? Air monitors, we have those around the place when they're mapped, people can then go and see that air quality data and so on. Play areas are a big discussion. And then cycling infrastructure. So again, because of the map and the work that's being done, just being able to see how poor the, the infrastructure is, where it's disconnected and using that for conversations, for submissions. Map is also used to inform submissions to planning applications. So I guess this, whole aspect of the value that we're getting out of it is huge. Um, we set up a group, maphatters.ie, and um, please connect in with us there through the OSM group, obviously, as well. And if you're coming to Salvage, uh, we'd love to meet you, show you around, and hopefully we'll be having an in-person meeting soon. And we'd just like to thank everybody, absolutely everyone. It's just been amazing, the sense of community that came and pulled us all together and jumped in with all that expertise and training from the OSM community in Ireland. Big thank you to Kieran, to Anne Catherine, and to Kira as well, um, and everyone that helped. We're now standing on our own. We do the challenges like with the phones that I raised, but but also we're going slowly, but but we will be progressing, and we look forward to keeping you updated on that. So thanks very much. That was absolutely brilliant. Um, I think, you know, uh, what you're doing in Selbridge is, uh, you know, absolutely fantastic a way of engaging with the community and, and, and uh, the outputs from that, generating the data and building a community. There's, there's so much, I think, that other communities around the country can learn from. Um, and that was absolutely fantastic. I think it's a real pathfinder for um, future development in, in, in other communities. Um, does anybody have any questions uh, for Vanessa? Or comments or suggestions? Yeah. So you have one question. So for the biodiversity, I'm curious how that was, um, how OSM helped that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Chad. It was breaking up the line a bit. I think how, how I think how OSM helped the with the biodiversity thing. If I if I yeah. heard, heard you right, Dad. Yeah, I, was, was there any kind of tags or anything that was used in relation to biodiversity? I would be, be be interested in. Well, at the moment, and I suppose the OSM contribution was first in training and raising awareness on how to do it. So we'd be maybe mapping hedgerows, trees, and so on. Mapping, but that's just to lay the groundwork for a task three, three, where we'll go in and name the species and so on. Because in our Selbridge Biodiversity Action Plan, it sets out certain targets. We want to engage with Maynooth University on how to measure the improvement of natural recovery in our area. And we want to feed in through mapping to show visually that story as well. So that's our plan one, task two. It is a future plan, but we have just started training, raising awareness, engaging tidy towns and the biodiversity group who want to come on board for that task. And in the meantime, match, mapping those natural features as we go along until we reach that point. Not sure if that answers your question. That's our plan. Thank you very much, yeah. Um, as a, because, because in Bray, I've noticed there are signs for areas um, of brand which have been left to grow. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in the age of biodiversity as, as a project so like like a document is not being streamed down, uh, and so it it's only occurred to me if there, if that should be tagged in some way of of an area kind of being left inside. I think uh, sometimes you have like an open park or an open field or kind of greenway beside a housing estate, and if part of that has been left to grow, if that should be sub mapped as a biodiverse. Uh, part of the green area, um, and because I, I haven't, I, I should look up um, 
uh, if we have an appropriate tag for that. Um, that's interesting. If there could be, and, and maybe somebody can advise on that, because each of the growing areas, it's not like some are left as meadows, some just have different cutting regimes, so they're just cut less. Some don't, you know, that there's no spraying. So, but they start from pilots and they're expanding. So then you would just see the, the growth in it and that would be helpful. But I don't know if there's a specific tag uh, for that. Uh, maybe, but that would certainly would be interest to us. But will that tag reflect the, the different types of pilot areas, cutting regimes and the way they're contributing? And to contribute to biodiversity improvement. Could I suggest there's a like there's maybe some guidance possible from the new working group um, that might uh, decipher how far down into tagging such things do go in within the, you know the tagging wiki and the tagging recommendations. So it could be something that somebody would come back to you on from that group. Um, we didn't. Um, myself and Anne, Carolyn and Kira were interacting with you we knew the kind of tag level depth too for what you needed for hedgerows but there's obviously uh, even a hedge can have um 10 or 15 different attributes uh tagged to it so um that was maybe at the stage your community was at that might have been a little bit early for them to get into that level of it but nevertheless it's brilliant what you're doing. And can I say, I just go slightly off topic here, Vanessa, and not many people here will realise that there was a day when Vanessa went out on her bike with her mapillary and she had one camera. Have you got an iPhone, Vanessa? Is that is that's what you have? Um, and she went around and she got thousands of images of the north part of Selbridge on her own. Now, others came in other days to help and they did their bit. But I was really super impressed, Vanessa, with how much ground you covered on your bike and the clarity and the um, completeness of your images. It was really, really, really very good in the pillory. Oh, thanks. Thanks, John. Um, we do have a question in, in the chat from Brian. He was wondering about um, the wheelchair street crossing part of the project. Is that something that you've addressed yet or proposed to address? It is certainly something we propose to address. I can't answer if it is um, fully addressed yet. Um, I think we're not there on doing a full accessibility, I suppose, mapping every single thing, including wheelchair uh, crossing points. Kiran, can you remember, or uh, Stephen is not here with us at the moment. He would have more information on exactly that. I know the accessibility uh, focus was again coming downstream once we had Yep. The items currently set out in task two, but we do some accessibility done, but I'm not sure about the wheelchairs. I don't even know if they exist. You you were going to liaise with the group in um, Galway in the Insight Centre, and I'll remember their name now in a second, but they're the ones who are kind of mapping mainly we'll footpaths. For access. footpaths. And, we'll crowd uh, for access. Crowd for access, that's it, yeah. So, again, going into detail, was that is what we had been planning for task four? Yeah, more or less. Great. Does anybody else have any uh, comments or suggestions or feedback or uh, for Vanessa? I'm aware, Vanessa, that you do have a time constraint on you there, so um, I want to facilitate that. Yes, so with that, I... oh, sorry, just on the accessibility um, issue, I, I know that's important for the community. So, you know, when we do get to it, we will be connecting back in and, and just to get as, as much learning from the community as possible. So we really appreciate that. And again, just to say thank you so much and a big thank you to Kieran uh, for his patience and his skill in bringing us all up to speed. Um, yeah, thanks very much, Kieran. Indeed, I'll, I'll echo that. Thanks to Kieran, and a huge thanks to you too, Vanessa, for, I think, as I said earlier, this is a, a real pathfinder um, tent pole type project that can, we can bring in a lot of other things and is useful for other communities around the country. Um, so thank you very much for both the Lightning Talk and the work that you're doing there uh, in Selbridge. Much appreciated. Thanks, Ryan.
Richard. And oh. sorry, I have to go, everybody. Um, but look forward no. to working with you during the year. Take care. Oh, no, we're... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone.